It's not as big as React and Django, but it's actually the little brother of Django that nobody knows about. Kind of like the little brother of the Jonas Brothers that nobody knew about. So that's basically Flask. I can't believe I just like said the Jonas Brothers talking about work. <laughs> Everybody. My name is Nyan. I'm the Black Female Engineer. It provides content for new and aspiring software engineers and welcome to my day in the life. I work at DreamWorks Animation Studios. I'm a software engineer and I work on the production engineering side of things. And so what my team does, so think about movies and DreamWorks in animation. A lot of people kind of stop at the idea of, okay, we have animators, then we have people just putting everything together, and then boom, we have Shrek. But there's a lot of iteration that a lot of people kind of leave out. You don't just create Shrek and call it a day. You create a rough sketch for the beginning days, then you kind of go in, do some edits, you send it to people, see what their comments are, get back to creating Shrek, and that constant rinse and repeat. Same thing with shots and sequences and all of that good stuff. And so what we do is we provide tools and software to make that collaboration process just a lot easier for teams. And so think about college when you had this team, you're working on a group project and all of y'all, you don't really wanna keep on being in the same place. And with the pandemic, maybe you couldn't even be in the same place. And so you may have relied on Google Drive a ton, Google Sheets, Google Docs, all of that good stuff so that one person or multiple people can be working on the exact same thing. Everybody could be looking at what everybody is working on, make comments, make edits, and keep on that editing process and whatnot. Think of some of our tools like like that basically this basically Google Drive of okay everybody can come together look at all the different shots all of the different sequences all the different characters made and whatnot make edits make comments and go back to the drawing board do what needs to be done and do it all again upload or download or draw or all of these different things to make collaboration just a lot easier so really that's what we do we develop and we maintain those apps sometimes the apps are ours and we created them sometimes the apps are third party and we just maintain them or we enhance them in some way by building upon those features and whatnot and so it's very exciting i have really enjoyed this team and in my team everyone kind of has their own project everyone kind of has their own app they really focus on rather than having one team where you all work together constantly to develop the same thing or to accomplish the same goal us we're more separated out in the sense that I haven't worked with most of my team members. It's a team of about nine, 10 of us. And I have, haven't worked with most of them because they work on other different apps that me and them just don't really cross paths. And so what I work on, or at least what I've been working on lately, I've only been working here for like two months. And so what I've been working on lately is building an app to maintain the managerial tasks of teams. It's making sure that yeah those managerial tasks can be done in kind of just one place rather than kind of going all around and talking to a bunch of people like hey can you do this and can you do that and i need this and i need that those managers being able to do those things on their own and so yeah throughout my day you're going to see me go through different meetings and whatnot and i'm going to come back sharing more about what i'm doing what i've been doing and yeah so i'll see you soon Okay, so it is now lunchtime all morning. I've been doing some debugging. Looks like the issue isn't really app related at all, but it's an issue nonetheless. And so going to be working this afternoon, probably trying to sidestep, do some uh, little bit of kind of, I don't know, hacking the system a little bit to get everything up and running the way it should be. And so yeah, it is lunchtime. I'm going to go and get some, I think California Pizza Kitchen. Get in 
back from lunch. For the rest of the afternoon, sorry, I'm still like lunch brain. For the rest of the afternoon, I'll be working on the app I am, you know, building and, you know, enhancing and whatnot. For this project, I'm using Python and Flask. I had never heard of Flask before. I don't know how many of y'all have heard of Flask before, but Flask is a Python micro framework. It's not as big as React and Django, but it's actually the little brother of Django that nobody knows about. Kind of like the little brother of the Jonas Brothers that nobody knew about. So that's basically Flask. I can't believe I just like said the Jonas Brothers talking about work. <laughs> but yes, that's basically what Flask is. And it took a little bit of learning. It took a little bit of getting used to. But actually, I was able to pick it up pretty quickly because of how micro it is as a micro framework. Because of that, it means that you really don't need much to get things up and running and there's a lot of flexibility with it and so I actually really like it. I actually like it more than I thought I would but I mentioned to you all that I am very very new my my two month anniversary is coming up and I'm honestly shocked that it's even been two months at all because it feels like two minutes and so I've had to learn a lot I mentioned I'm building in Python right now and that has been a big uh, like shift because I've never used Python before. I primarily learned through learning JavaScript and whatnot. I went to a coding bootcamp and really the focus was very JavaScript heavy. That's what I've built web apps with. And so when it comes to learning new programs and languages and tools and whatnot, especially if you're in a new job or a new boot camp and you're just trying to learn things really quickly, I really recommend pair programming. That's actually helped me a lot in my learning. And I'd like to thank CoScreen for sponsoring this video. CoScreen is a screen sharing and collaboration tool for like developers, built by developers for developers. And so I really love it because they really just hit the nail on the head knowing exactly what developers need most, especially with this whole parent-teacher conference going on for the last 30,000 years. And so it really just makes that process of pair programming a lot easier and a lot smoother. I'll link above a video where I share more on pair programming and really how best to yeah go about it so you're getting the most you can out of it. CoScreen also has low input latency, which really allows it to just perform so, so fast no matter how many users are or on a call two, three, six, the world is your oyster. And so knowing that you can work and not experience that lag really just makes a huge, huge difference. But one of the things I really love about CoScreen is how easy it was to get it up and running. It truly took no time at all, like maybe three minutes, maybe. There are other tools to use for pair programming like VS Code and just regular old Zoom sessions. However, with this, it makes the back and forth that pair programming often entails a lot more seamless because you can just grab on to a person's screen and type things out or fix typos or direct them and so I really really highly recommend checking out their site checking out the tool itself it's free to use and so go in the link below and check it out and actually if you comment on this video I'm going to select three people total to get a lifetime access to CoScreen where you can just use it in all of its glory and unlock all of the amazing features it has to offer and so make sure to do that as mentioned I'm going to now do some more app development for that managerial web app I'm building Sunday morning waking up with you we got no plans we got nothing to do you tell me you love me I go start the coffee Sunday morning easy love with you okay 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 I'm your sunshine mixed with a little hurricane so I used to think I liked front-end development more <laughs> however after spending like a solid two months not doing strictly just front-end I'm realizing I don't think I do I think I like anything that has to do more with just logic, like creating the functions and the functionalities. And so maybe, so I like the, maybe the JavaScript portion of front-end development, but I also like a lot of back-end development. And that's what I've realized because here I am trying to style this web page 
And I can't grab, and I'm looking here because that's where my monitor is. I can't grab what I need to grab. Like it's not doing what it needs to do. It's not giving what it's supposed to give. It's not understanding the assignment. And so this week, like, ah, I'm so frustrated. And that's what is really rough with front end development. So a lot of people misinterpret front end. So a lot of people misinterpret front end development to mean only like, oh, you're just designing the you know, web app, the app, the page, etc., and calling it a day. But like, no, there's a lot of logic that goes into it. However, there's also the designing portion. I think it's the designing portion I'm starting to like not so much because at least with the logic, there's the constant, even if you're not getting it, even if you're not producing the output you need to, you're still just constantly trying things out and researching and doing all of these things. For front end, I feel like it's just so slow. It's just so slow. You feel time so much more because here I am trying to just make the width be like the page size and it's just not doing it. It's like, no, 50px is all you get from me. And so it just feels so much slower to go through it's such a slower process. And so, yeah, that's something I've learned over these last few weeks. I don't think I'm as ramped up about front end development as I used to be. Um, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Anyway. Three forty-three p.m. PST. I am in LA, and yes, I shared with my mentor how annoying CSS is. I, like I said, loved front-end development. Love it less so now, and so trying to. I'm looking up. I'm looking up at my monitor, trying to see. How best to go about the rest of my time because at five o'clock I have a new hire bonfire if you saw my Instagram you know that I was sent a package of alcohol um, al alcohol and a cocktail maker situation like a, I don't even what's the word like a DIY cocktail so alcohol and I don't even know was it like tonic water and a juice and garnish ice um so they said everything you need and so i have the new hire bonfire today at five o'clock so about an hour and 15 minutes and so in that time i'm trying to see what do i want to do and i'm truly thinking while i'm filming what do i want to do so yeah we have a new hire bonfire going on in about one and a half minutes i have a wine glass because i haven't really done enough apartment furnishing to now get to the cocktail uh, glass part of things. So we'll be using this. Not really sure what proportions to use these ingredients on, with, on what, yeah. Uh, so we will try our best. But other than that, we're at the end of my day. So thank you all for watching and don't forget to leave your comments below.